I make she smile. I make electronic music, very influenced by noise, music, shoegaze, J-pop, a lot of very contrasting elements. And I also run the label Zoom Ones. I first started making music that I feel relates to Make She Smile. Back in high school, I started getting into a lot of Japanese noise and pop music. I had a lot of bands back then with Alex of Plastercast. We had a lot of noise groups back then, sort of inspired like Boredoms, Animal Collective, those sort of groups. Like we even played battle the bands and whatnot, and like people really hated it, of course. People in rock bands and whatnot be like, oh, you make ambient music, you make noise music, that isn't real music. The first song I feel felt very real to make she smile was the song Pale and AGS off my first album, Lust. I wrote those songs when uh, Tumblr was first starting to become popular. It was sort of about feeling this disassociation and feeling infatuated with a lot of images and people that come up there. I really want to convey that sense of longing through a digital means. And I think a lot of internet subculture, although I do appreciate it, I feel like a lot of it is stagnating. And I think that the internet should reflect what you want to see in real life. A lot of my music now, a lot of Zoom Lens is trying to take a sort of a more humanized approach as opposed to just a digital approach. Originally from Anaheim in Orange County, when I think of Anaheim and I think of places like Orange County, I think of the words conservatism, um, assimilation. I think of the need to not really be yourself and the need to disrupt that sort of environment. You know, we're not really living in like a post-racial society. And I think growing up in that environment, sort of having this people with like a hidden agenda forces you into the shell. You're sort of always paranoid about who you are, who you're with, what you're trying to do. Well, I was born, you know, as a ja half Japanese, half Chinese, um, fourth generation, fifth generation, respectively. I was always considered very like whitewashed or um, too Asian for people. And I think that's something that people of color do relate to a lot because there's so much identity crisis, there's so, so much assimilation, so much them trying to, not even realizing that they aren't who they are sometimes. I think it's a very strange experience. It can be a lightning, but I feel like it's mostly very angry for a lot of people too. You're sort of thrown into the situation where being an artist or anyone who has like a voice that you know people can see and be like, oh, this is an Asian person, for example, who is doing what they do and suddenly it becomes political because they are who they are. I, I guess people can take that however they want. Maybe they don't like the term Asian American and they just want to be who they are. But I, I think, yeah, my music, my music, I feel is very political. I feel like a lot of art needs to be grounded in reality, but it's still fantastical and out there. Because I, I think going back to being a person of color, I think that's how we deal with a lot of reality. We sometimes need an escape, but at the end of the day, we have to face that there's these like, situations we need to take care of coming from who we are, and we need to speak about those issues or else nothing really changes. I think the message is always just to be yourself and respect yourself, and to know that what you're placed into what people expect of you isn't always who you should be, and you should try to take the steps necessary to realize yourself and, I guess, belong to your own. <laughs>